Hey, it's AP, and today I'm lighting my Lego DeLorean. Check it out. I'm not much of a Lego guy, but for my birthday this year, I decided to rekindle the experience of my youth and uh, get myself something that I could make on my birthday. When I was a kid, I would go to the hobby store with my dad and he'd buy me a model kit and I would take the day off from school and build it and have just an excellent day. And now that I'm in my 40s, I kind of like to revisit some of those <laughs> good fond memories. So this year I decided to pick up a Lego kit. Now, I'm not one for Lego kits typically, but I didn't want to buy a model kit because those end up turning into a video production that will get launched on the channel. And I wanted to do something fun. So I found a kit that I really fell in love with. I didn't even know they made this because I don't follow Lego, but they have the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Now, this might not be a surprise to you if you are a Lego aficionado, but this came out, I believe, last year sometime. And this is part of their icons series and uh, it has all kinds of great features to it you uh, have an open hood and inside there you have oops i just knocked a piece off inside there you have a, a box of plutonium and marty's hoverboard and uh, the gull wings open up knock, knock another piece off <laughs> that's why i don't like legos yeah the uh, gull wing doors open up it even comes with a very cool little light up feature. I don't know if you can see that. The uh, flux capacitor lights up there. And you can do one of three versions of the car. You can do the Back to the Future car. You can do the Back to the Future 2 car where it hovers, which is what this, uh, this version is. And then you have the Back to the Future 3 car. Uh, I like the, the hover version because back when I was a kid, you know, thinking about uh, something past the year 2000 and uh, having flying cars was really exciting. And so uh, I, I just wanted to make that one. What's really neat about this also is that you have some, I forget what they're called, they're Technic or something like that. Anyway, you have the ability to convert the wheels into hover mode. And I'm gonna make a display for this eventually. But because I like to overcomplicate things and I said I wasn't going to make a video out of this for the channel, uh, I decided that I'm just going to lie to myself and do it. A friend of mine said that I should look at lighting my Lego kit. Now, I, I didn't know because I don't follow Legos. I don't care about Legos, but this may have changed my mind um, that there are people out there that light their kits. And there are companies out there that actually make lighting kits specifically for all the different crazy Lego kits that are out there. So I went and did some investigating and uh, I'm just gonna love doing this <laughs> until it flies off the table. So I did some research and I picked a kit that I uh, really liked. Uh, this is from Game of Bricks, not sponsored, designed by Game of Bricks and Talonin, assembled in China. Uh, they're from Estonia. Interesting. <laughs> He's staying with us for a little while. He's from Estonia. Uh, I bought them direct. I uh, got a coupon code, so I think I spent maybe 70 bucks on this. And they have uh, different versions of the kit for this, uh, this Lego set. They have just a basic light-up kit. Uh, they had, uh, I forget all the different versions, but this was their, their top tier kit because it comes with sounds as well. Uh, you can't have this light up and not have it make sounds. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, uh, install the sound set as well. All right, so let's crack open the box. Uh, this is for the uh, 10300 DeLorean. Uh, there are a couple different DeLoreans out there for Lego. This one is the 10300. Uh, inside the box, we have, of course, the uh, the sticker that it, everybody seems to send you these days. Uh, check out the instructions. Instructions.gameofbricks.eu. This actually got here relatively quickly considering it came from across the pond. Ooh, and I got a, a coupon for my next lighting kit. Uh, user manual. Let's see, user manual. Little instructions. It doesn't tell you where they go. Uh, it seems to be some tips and trips, tips and tricks on how to plug everything in. Okay, so we'll get to that. 
Uh, so let's see. I'm gonna I have my iPad here. Let's load up the instructions. Instructions are loaded. I like that. They tried to minimize the amount of paper junk that people send. So the lights inside the box, we get a remote control and it has different functions that you'll be able to use, including volume, different lighting modes. Uh, that's going to be pretty fun. We have numbered bags. Let's see, five, six. Oh my God, these are super tiny. Seven, two. Uh, it looks like there is a USB battery pack. Nice. We have your speaker, my speaker. Uh, looks like some, ooh, uh, these are stickers. That will, I mean, uh, these are wheel replacement hubs. So the wheels will light up. So that's pack 10. Uh, I think we have, this is the controller with the USB plug. Uh, and all these tiny, tiny little lights. So two, three, one, four. Uh, this must be the control board. Uh, it looks like it has a micro USB. Oh no, that's not a micro USB. That's a uh, USB mini. <laughs> okay, well, it has, doesn't have a number on it. Four, five, Six, seven, wait, where's eight? Seven. There's no eight or nine. Uh-oh. Hmm, okay. Well, hopefully that's not an issue. So we'll figure out what happened uh, to the missing pieces. So I'm pulling up the, uh, this is the instruction page. And it looks like I see Back to the Future Time Machine Standard and Back to the Future Time Machine Classic. I don't know what the difference between the two. And then it shows me Diagon Alley. What did he say, dear? Diagon Alley. I thought he did. So maybe it's this one. Lego Back to the Future Time Machine. All right, so I guess we just get started. You're going to be working with super tiny LEDs, wires, and boards, so don't be a bull in a china store. If my autofocus worked, you could see how tiny that thing really is. First, we'll start on the headlights and blinkers. tweezers is going to help out in every step when it comes to pushing the wires around. My first disappointment came when this flat tile didn't sit perfectly flush. Again, I'm a newbie at Legos and lighting them, so while I thought I bought a kit that would somehow mitigate the wonky brick laying, I was wrong. Instructions are about 50% useful, so it doesn't tell you that this pack comes with four white LEDs and two yellow ones. Make sure that you're using the white ones in the headlights and the yellow ones below the bumper. Unlike me, who put everything together, then tested them only to realize that I put one yellow one in the headlights by accident. Oops. Now let's tidy up the wires and put everything back. Plug all the wires into the control board and hide it under the hood. 
I really tried getting the box of plutonium to fit back there as well, but there's just too many wires, so off to the Lego scrap pile we go. Run the jumper cable under the carriage. Everything will eventually plug into the controllers down there. And now we do our first test. This is probably one of the easiest steps of the whole kit. You're just sticking the LEDs in the ceiling of the cab, running the wire to the bottom of the carriage, and bam, you're done. Oh, the instructions show labels for the wires. My pack didn't come with any, so I just used my label maker to whip some up. Ooh, brake lights. This entire section is the biggest pain in the ass of the whole project. There's a lot of wires here and we have to cram them into super tight spaces which caused a lot of stops and starts in trying to get everything to fit. This is where I almost launched the DeLorean back to 1985 in a bout of rage vomit. But I took a nice little walk, reflected on life, came back and finished it up. This whole section I had to pretty much rebuild to accommodate the wires. Again, step away, don't throw the DeLorean, it'll be okay. Now we're getting to the pieces that sold me on the kit in the first place. These are all pre-wired sections. The 
only thing to look out for is making sure the LED strip fits snug inside the Lego pieces. Don't be afraid to use your tweezers to push the strips in a bit. Now we add more pre-lit pieces along the sides. This is going to be so freaking awesome. Pro tip, once the wheels are lit and back onto the car, do not try and roll it. You'll bust it. There, you've been warned. I wasn't a fan of how these are lit. They literally slide into a gap between the Lego pieces, which means they are really easy to pop out. Not sure if there's a way to make them stay better, so just be aware that they don't fit perfectly.
This is the light for the flux capacitor. She might not look like much, but once we're up and running, oh boy. Remote is a bit wonky. You'll need to be plugged into a pack with 100% fresh batteries for it to work. You turn on the pack, hold the power button on the remote down for three seconds, and disco. All right, we are complete. As you can see, I've done a costume change because it did take me a couple days of working on this, but I think all in all, it was probably a couple hours worth of work when it's all said and done. The, um, it wasn't as, uh, as elegant of a solution as I thought it would be. I picked this because I thought all the bricks were kind of custom made, and I guess I just didn't do my research enough because as you saw, as I was putting this all together, there are parts where you do have to kind of squish wires in between bricks and you don't get the tightest fit that uh, you can because you have this kind of buffer area. And uh, that's made for some relatively loose places, but I feel like, you know, nothing is going to immediately fall off. It just did make the process a bit more lugubrious. Is that a good word for this? Challenging, maybe? <laughs> uh, but was it worth it? I will say during some of this, I was like, this is not worth it. But once you turn it on for the first time and hear that music or the sound effects and see the lights flash, it absolutely is worth it. I couldn't imagine doing this without the sounds though. I'm glad I purchased the upgraded sound pack. The lights are cool but the sound effects take it to the next level. So I highly suggest uh, if you're going to pick this up, pick up the version with the sound. I will leave, of course, links to everything that I used in the description below. Overall, I'm happy. Now I have to 3D print a display stand so I can put this in flight mode and uh, proudly display it. Have you lit your DeLorean? Did you use Game of Bricks? Was your process a little bit smoother than mine? Well, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear how your, your process went. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.